Hey guys, I'm Lucas. Welcome to Kanus episode 38 about another Soyuz launch. This time Soyuz will launch for and from Russia, but more on that later on. The launcher itself is very similar to the one successfully launched by Ariane Space yesterday, using four strap-on boosters, but comes with a different upper stage called Volga. It is a lighter and cheaper alternative to the Fregat upper stage, usually used for very light payload. And indeed, the payload this time weighs less than a ton, which is very little for a Soyuz, but of course highly depends on the destination. The rocket will be the first to launch from the all-new Vastorchny Cosmodrome in eastern Russia. The name itself, by the way, stands for Eastern or Oriental. Liftoff will occur tonight at 2 am UTC, which is 8 in the morning local time, and it will head for a highly inclined polar orbit at roughly 89 degrees, similar to the Ariane space launch yesterday. Though I have to mention, I'm not 100% sure about it because doing research on this launch involved a lot of Google Translator usage and please correct me if you find a flaw. Anyways, the new launch site in East Russia has similar characteristics to the one in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where most of the Russian Soyuz rockets launch from. The main reason to build another site was to become more independent from Kazakhstan and being much closer to the ocean will now also allow more used stages to safely splash down in the ocean. As mentioned, the payload is relatively light, weighing less than a ton and consists of three satellites all built by universities. The biggest one is Mikhail Lomonosov, which was named after the same named Russian scientist who was born in 1711 to honor his contributions to science. While not very known in the West, he is nowadays celebrated in Russia for all his achievements and is one of the most famous minds. If you want to know more about his history, I will link you a really good article about him in the info box. The satellite itself carries different sensors and experiments to study cosmic radiation. While being very dangerous to humans, cosmic radiation can help us to understand the universe in such a way the Large Hadron Collider does for example. The accelerator is the most powerful machine humanity has ever built to smash particles together, yet it is nothing in comparison to cosmic radiation, which peaks at 40 million times the energy. I'm not a physicist, so don't quote me on that, but smashing particles together is the only way for us to really take a look inside the smallest stuff we are made of. While an atom's core is made out of protons and neutrons, protons and neutrons themselves are also made out of something and this something is bound together by an enormous force, which is called strong interaction. As mentioned, the only way to break this bound is, well, to break it. The higher the speed or energy one can smash particles with, the more from the inside gets unbound and can be detected by giant detectors. Now a particle accelerator is very costly, so it definitely makes sense to study cosmic radiation which is free and could do the same thing an accelerator does, just 40 million times better. The other satellites Soyuz carries are the H2D and the CubeSat SAMSAT 218. The CubeSat SAMSAT is a demonstrator to showcase satellites in Earth orbit can control the attitude, meaning the orientation, using the very little atmosphere left up there. Bigger satellites usually use gyroscopes or propellant to control their spin in order to keep facing a particular point, so it could save quite some mass making use out of it. AIST uses a radar in a similar fashion the yesterday launched Sentinel satellite does, but using another frequency of radiation in the so-called P-band. It can penetrate dry earth soil up to 10 meters deep, which could potentially allow to detect objects hidden underground, but also hidden below vegetation. I'm not sure how the mission will be executed in space, but all three satellites will at some point hopefully reach their desired destination and I also hope the upper stage will re-enter back into the atmosphere to not further increase the amount of space debris. Ok, that was K-News about another Soyuz and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.